Okay, everyone, I'm back with another video on determinants, and this one we're going to calculate determinants using the, I think it's called the cofactor expansion method. Uh, it's, some, it's, it's a method, it works, and we're just going to go with it. So in the last video, remember we talked about how to calculate determinants using row reduction and then, you know, adjusting for the fact that if you use an elementary row operation, the determinant of your original matrix is equal to then this operated on matrix times either a scalar if you used scalar multiplication or uh, it's the negative if you switched one row right so uh, yeah now let's move on to this new method so this is determinants using let's just call it the cofactor expansion for now and so Let's start off then with a three by three example, which is the following matrix. If I consider, or let us consider, one, two, four, negative one, three, negative five, zero, two, zero. Okay? And so a lot of you guys then would do the 114 method where you, you know, you cross out this row and the, uh, this column in this row, and then you take one times the determinant of this guy down here, and then you subtract out two, uh, and then you you know cross out that, and then you got this going on. Right, that's that's all fine. Uh, that's perfectly fine. And I'm exactly going to do that, except I'm going to teach you guys how to realize that there's going to be a shorter way to do this. Instead of starting crossing out this top row and the first column, let's just start then with this bottom row, right? So let's if I start with the bottom row. I cross out the bottom row. I can start out by crossing out the first column. That's fine. But I'm just going to get zero times the determinant of this guy up here. Right. And the zero times the determinant of that guy is just going to be zero. So there's no need to, like, calculate this. Likewise, if I, cal if I cross out the third column, right, I get zero times whatever the heck the determinant of this guy is. I don't care, right? It's zero. So... The only value that we really need to care about is this value right here, right? This expansion along the last row and the second column, okay? And so what I'm going to have then is I'm going to have 2, right, times the determinant of this guy. So the determinant of this matrix is equal to 2 times negative 1 to the i plus j times the determinant of 1, negative 1, 4, negative 5. Okay, cool. What the heck is i plus j? Well, i plus j just means where does this 2 go, right? So where, what location is 2 in? And so here, this is in the third row in the second column, right? So then this is actually equal to 2 times negative 1 to the fifth, right? 3 plus 2 is 5, times the determinant of this guy, this 2 by 2 matrix here, is negative 5 plus 4, so negative 1. And so then my, determ uh, my determinant is actually equal to negative uh, 2 times negative 1 times negative 1, and <clears throat> what is this? This is actually then negative 2 is my determinant. Or positive 2. My bad. Positive 2 should be my determinant. And let's verify this then by, if, by doing it the other way that we are much more familiar with. Or more comfortable with, right? We're essentially doing the same thing, right? We're actually calculating this negative 1 to the i plus j term every time we cross out a row in a column. Um, but since we do it from the first row and the first column, we're just much more used to it for some reason. So here, right, this is 1 times uh, the determinant. So I'm going to use the square bracket, uh, the straight line bracket determinant. Okay, right. Minus 2 times the negative 1, negative 5, 0, 0. And then plus 4 times, well, this looks like negative 1, 2, right? And so 
negative 5, 0. Okay. And right, why is this middle term a negative sign? Well, that's because this is this 2 term is in the 1, 2 slot, right? So negative 1 to the 1 plus 2 is negative 1 to the third, so it gives me negative 1, and so that's why I have a minus sign here um, in front of the 2. So calculating all these determinants, I actually get 1 times 10 minus 0 plus negative 8. Okay, and this is equal to positive 2, so yeah, we're done. So the determinant of this 3 by 3 is 2, right? And so <clears throat> why am I showing you guys this 3 by 3? It's, oh, it looks so obvious, right? Oh, we do this, uh, we just crossed out a different row and different column. Yeah, well, it, it sometimes makes these problems a lot easier, uh, especially in a, in a case where you have more than just a 3 by 3. So let's look at a 4 by 4 case here, where, uh, so we have 1, 2, 0, 1, 4, negative 5, 0, negative 2, yeah. Okay, negative 3, 1, 2, 0, 5, negative 6, 0, 4. All right, let's find the determinant of this. What am I going to do? I'm actually going to expand on this last column, okay? And so what I'm going to do then is I'm actually going to do that first, okay? So what is that then? This is 1 times negative 1 to the... 1 plus 4, right, times the determinant then of this lower block right here, which is 4, negative 5, 0, negative 3, 1, 2, 5, negative 6, 0, right? Okay. Now let's expand then on still this last column, but I'm going to do this row instead. Okay. And so what do I get? Then this is plus a negative 2 times negative 1 to the 2 plus 4, right? Because we're in the second row, fourth column. And then times the determinant then of this guy and these two guys, which is 1, 2, 0, negative 3, 1, 2, 5, negative 6, 0. And then we got to keep on expanding. And you'll notice that the more like dimensions you have in the square matrix, the exponentially like more time this takes. And yeah, determinants do take a long time. You probably don't have to find more than a four by four on an exam. Uh, expand along this guy, we got a zero. So right, you got a zero here. So we're just gonna ignore this expansion. Um, because you're going to get zero times whatever. It's going to be zero. So now we expand along the last column, or the last row. This is four times negative one to the four plus four, right? So this is the fourth row, fourth column, okay? And then you got one, two, zero, four, negative five, zero, negative three, one, two. Cool. So this is what the determinant's equal to. And so now we got these smaller 3 by 3 determinants, and let's expand. Let's find the determinant of those then. Well, for each one, you notice I set this problem up, so there's a shortcut to this problem. Usually that's going to be the case. What do you notice? Well, hey, look, this last column only has one place to expand upon, which is that guy right there, that 2, right, in the second row, third column. Likewise, in this next determinant, I only need to expand upon the second row, third column, and then in this last 3x3 three three determinant here, we need to go last row, last column, also expand upon the 2. All right, and so if we write that out, what do we get? Then we get the determinant is equal to, and so let's simplify something, so this is negative 1 times negative 1 to the 5th, which is negative 1, so this is negative 1, times then 2 times negative 1, right, to the 2 plus 3, because it's the second row, third column, okay, times the determinant of 4, negative 5, 5, negative 6, all right, plus 2, negative 2, to the negative 1 to the 6th, which is a positive 1, so now you got negative 2 times a positive, or negative 2 times a positive 2, right, which is the 2 that we need to expand upon here, um, 
but now we have the negative 1 to the 2 plus 3, okay, because it's in the second row, third column, and then we have the 1, 2, 5, negative 6. All right, and finally, we move to our last guy here. This is 4 times a positive 1, right, negative 1 to the 8, okay, uh, and then times 2 times negative 1 to the 3 plus 3 times then 1, 2, 4, negative 5. Okay, cool. And so now, this is kind of simple. We can simplify this now. What do we get? You get negative 1 times 2 times negative 1, right? Negative 1 to the fifth is negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So you get 2 times. Uh, this determinant becomes negative 24 plus 25, so 1, okay? Plus negative 2 times negative 1, which is 2, times 2 is 4. And then this determinant here is uh, negative 16, okay? And then plus 4 times 2 times a positive 1, okay? So that's 8 times, and what's this determinant? Negative 5 minus 8 is negative 13, okay? And then so our determinant then is equal to 2 minus 64 minus 104, I believe, yeah, okay, and then this determinant is equal to negative 166, okay, so the determinant of this matrix up here, 1, 2, 0, 1, etc., is one, negative 166, that's going to be the determinant, plug in the matrix calculator, uh, it should be right, and so, yeah, so that's how you do cofactor expansion on 4 by 4s you might need to use this. It really depends. It depends on if the professors are nice or not. There's one last trick we can do, and it only applies to 4x4s, four and I'll talk about that in the next video. Um, but when we really heavily deal with determinants in Chapter 7 and beyond, keep this cofactor expansion in mind, especially when we come to 4x4s. Four uh, it'll be really useful then. And so, yeah, so let's move on to the next case then. In my next video, I'll talk about 4x4 four four in a special case makes calculating these determinants a lot easier.